Road trip time, fishing freaks. Guess what, I'm back from the Northwoods and I'm ready to dangle, baby. Although the silver bullet isn't quite ready. I want you to stare at the boat, comment down below what you think is missing right now. I'll give you a few seconds here. 100 degrees today, by the way. Very steamy. Just came from, you know, in the 70s, Northwoods, that was nice. If you commented, the seats are missing, you'd be correct. You don't want a prize, but uh, they're just gone. Don't worry, they weren't stolen or anything. They're actually in the back of the wagon right now, which by the way, I have my original wagon back. Yes, the, uh, the beautiful Silverado Midnight Edition High Country that I had. It was a temporary Chevy let me have it for like four months. It was great. They let me film some content with it, but now it's back to my OG and I love her. I love her so much. Got the cap on, baby. And we're gonna be doing our, our thing. We're gonna be truck camping. Speaking of hot, sticky summers, guys, don't forget, go to googitsquad.com and get the latest apparel to keep you cool, keep your skin cool, keep your, keep your body parts feeling nice. Four-way stretch, moisture wicking, UV protecting, hoods, long sleeves to keep you on the dangle out there. It's bad. Also, I recommend the gloves. Get the gloves. I carry them with me just about everywhere I go. I wear them all the time. Don't let your hands get fried. GoogieSquad.com. Use my promo code LFG. Save 10% at checkout. Get you some baits while you're there as well. Fishing freaks, I've barely fished out of the new Silver Bullet. I've spent most of my time with drills and hammers and sweating. I've started from nose to tail. But today's video, we're giving it the eyeballs, the new eyeballs. I ripped the birds off, man. We're putting on the garms today. And I've been waiting on this one for a long time. I found some graphs, got a pretty decent deal. We're heading down to go get them. We're gonna slap them on. I'm gonna fish a lake that I've never fished before and it's got crappies in it. So I'm very excited. So let's get on the road and let's give the silver bullet some new eyeballs. Okay, we're on our next stop, folks. And we are at the Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World. They have American flags displayed all in the entrance. Gotta give a hallelujah to BP right now. I'm here to get something. So my buddy Zach, he works at Garmin and he has, uh, he's helping me out with this install. And he actually lives in this area. And he told me to, I, I gotta get this, the latest transducer to get the crispiest view on my back unit. So. I'm here to get that. And the reason I have this gas tank off, or the gas tank is installed. I'm not gonna take the gas tank out. The reason I have the seats out is so I could run the transducer. Uh, it's finagling. There's some finagling to be done, and I've got some tools to help me with that, but that's why I have the seats out. I'll show you, if you happen to have a Vexus, uh, how this whole deal is run right here. So let's go in here, let's get this deucer and move on. Welcome to the fires of hell, also known as Texas, in late June, going into July, guys. This is, it's steamy. Good news, we have not one, but two Garmin Echo Map 12s. These are the Ultras, these aren't the Ultra 2s, all right? But the good news is we got them, we got them here. I've been waiting on these for a while, so Short backstory, you know, didn't want to pay full price. I'm trying to trying to be budget mindful on this boat. Do it right, but be budget mindful. And my buddy Zach, who works at Garmin, he helped me find a, a deal from a gentleman that was selling them. I actually ended up getting both of these uh, for under two Gs. I did just have to buy the back transducer, and I also had to buy the live scope up front. But we also had a little help um, on our mounting system, the turret, which I'll show you from the good folks at Foresight. I'm at a lake. I'm at a lake I've never fished before. I really wanna fish it. I'm itching to get these graphs installed, get out there and start dangling around and find some brush piles and go crappie fishing. This is a good time, even though it's hot, nobody's out here fishing. It's a good time to get offshore and poke them. Uh, but I am gonna be sleeping outside tonight in the fires of the dungeon known as Texas. So it's gonna be rough. Um, brought a hammock. We're gonna do a little um, tailgate camping. We're gonna see how it goes. 
but you guys just stick with me. We're gonna get the silver bullet up and running. So as far as the front graph goes, I'm just gonna take this over here. We're gonna put it on the little dealio. Okay, we got it in the cradle. We're just gonna latch that down, wa-bam. And uh, that one's done. Now for the back unit, which I probably used to call the main unit, I don't even think so anymore. It's like this one, navigation, you know, forward facing up front. That's, that's where you're spending most of your time. Let's not kid ourselves. The Echo Map 12 was too big to put on to this Vexus stock flush mount. Couldn't do it. So what I ended up doing was getting a um, uh, BBT mount ordered it it's for this console i installed it we have that here i have power cords run i have the uh, network cable run we have to run the transducer i'm gonna wire that up nice and then we'll be able to uh to go fishing the hard part is getting the transducer wire from back there all the way up through here look at this i i have intimately I've spent intimate time with this boat now. I know the inner workings. I know the guts. I don't know how many of you can say that about your boat, but I, I do. I know the crispy collector in and out. It's pretty basic, but now I, I know this boat. I know most of it. And I apologize to Vexus for calling them all the time, but I'm just like, hey, what about this? What about this? How do I get through here? What about, what, was this right? What, what does this need to look like? The, the issue that I learned with of course, you know, I get the year model right before they switch over to the, the bigger electrical wiring outlets, the, the housing on this boat, this model. It is a little too small, a little too small to run a bunch of things in there. And that causes them a lot of issues. So that is the tube. That is all the, the wires that go from the back. They run up through the side panel right here and they split at the console. So some of them go up into here, the rest go all the way up into here. Already wired it. That's a, uh, that's a crazy show in there. First thing we gotta do, take the old bird deucer off. And of course, looks like they use some uh, T20 or T25 bits. I hope I brought one of those. I was a good boy and I prepped I knew I was gonna be doing some crazy stuff out in the middle of nowhere with power tools. So I have one, that's a 20. Uh, brought my ratchets, so we'll get in here, we'll, we'll ratchet that off, we'll take this off, that's gonna leave us with uh, holes. So we brought silicone. Um, this looks a little complicated, but this is actually the easiest part of this whole thing. And I, I didn't even film the bad parts because it was it brought out the worst in me. And there's a little water coming out of our holes right here. But that worked pretty good. The old deucer is out, y'all. Leaving us a big gaping hole in the bottom of the hole. Making matters worse, our shade has moved. And uh, yeah. It's 100 degrees, index 109. So, problem is the silicone drying. I don't, I'm not gonna get in a hurry to uh, get out there before this stuff dries. Let's see what we got here. Cure time. 30 minute water ready, okay. Well, we will be using this right here and maybe we'll get out on the water this evening. Yes. I wanna get out there just to dive in at this point. But let me show you this big gaping hole. Gone a little bit deeper than I realized, and uh, I'm just in it. I'm in, I'm in waist deep. So, can't give up now though. We gotta finish the job, the silver bullet must ride. So, just a big old hole right there. I actually really like the way uh, Vexus put this in here. This is really um, clean, the way it's done. It just, it does involve a large hole. So the way this is designed, your transducer cable goes through here and this sucks up to the bottom of your hole 
cord goes up and then on top, you've got a little uh, rubber grommet that goes under this and then you screw it on all the while siliconing the whole thing and squeezing it up tight. And uh, it, it comes out really clean underneath the way they had it uh, run with these special zip ties that were screw in. I really liked it. I'm gonna have to get some replacement uh, zip ties, but I'm just gonna clean up the area a little bit from the inside. Let me show you inside area. Everything is nice and neat right now. It's so beautiful. I've got all my batteries. I'm gonna get to that here in a minute. How I've got everything wired and organized. But that hole is gonna need to be just cleaned up so that when I apply the silicone, everything's gonna be nice and flush. Got the new deucer posted up. I'll be honest with you, not my best work. I'm working under duress out here and don't judge me. It's a little sloppy. I knew today was gonna be a challenge. Working out in the, here, in the heat, not having my garage with me, but it'll work. I think it'll work. My problem was I basically wanted to use the same exact holes as the bird deucer. That was not gonna happen, they didn't line up. I ended up using uh, one and then I had to drill another hole. And I used the same screws. I didn't use the screws it came with and they're a little, um, they're, they're not as thick as the other ones. So, you know, I'm drilling holes in the bolt, trying try not to make bigger holes. Um, but one of the screws kind of slipped through the, uh, the plastic there a little bit, but we slapped a bunch of silicone on. I think it's gonna be okay. So at this point, the bird deucer, can go away. Uh, we are, I'm gonna say a little, um, I don't know, maybe a little too deep. Like what, what the manual said on the Garmin was to mount this deucer for an aluminum boat 10 millimeters below the boat. I think I'm more than that. Definitely gonna consult with my Garmin buddy on that. See what the dealio is. Hopefully it reads right, hopefully it runs right. I'm not ha having a bunch of like splashing from, you know, water hitting the deucer. I don't know, I might've just screwed up. Everything was so beautiful and clean, Dead gun it. Okay, it is now 3.15, approaching the hottest part of the day and we are still uh, sitting on the gas tank. And we have all of this cord from the transducer. This is when the fun really begins. It's where you cut your teeth. So the whole reason for me taking the seats out is because this point right here, if I can't run it through this tube, it's like three inches wide maybe, this corrugated tube up through and out the console, that I'm going to have to reroute it probably around this gas tank. I'm going to have to do a little custom job. I've spent hours hours trying to run a sea clear harness if you guys are unfamiliar with that uh, just a harness that is uh, basically thick gauge cable uh, and it was a bear getting it through there i don't even know how i did it uh, i ended up buying a snake cam so i can like see in there i hope i don't have to break that out I'm just taking you along for this one. I didn't take you along for the other stuff because there were some demons coming out. I didn't want you guys to see. I went ahead and I uh, attached a, a cable or a, uh, some bank line that runs through this hose. So I'm gonna tie this to the other end of this uh, rope, bring it through there, and from there, then we're gonna have to finagle something else. I've got some some fencing wire, some other stuff, and we'll we'll try to get it up through there. But it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a bear cake. All right, we got our string wrapped around our cable. Let's hope. JC, come on, baby. 
Let's get it through. Let's get it to the end zone. We're going in. Once you go in, there's no turning back. Can't even get it to the hole. We're in, we're in the hole. I can already tell you, this is just gonna, I don't think it's gonna work, but we'll see. Damn, it's already stuck. Mm, nope, that is not happening. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull out. Yeah, that was not, that was gonna damage that cable. That was gonna be bad news bears. I'm probably just gonna run it right through here, to be honest with you. Just, I've got a nice bird. It's just soothing me through this right now. This is why we brought the wire. It's gonna come into a play a couple times, I think. Gosh. It's a nightmare. Right, we're gonna run around the gas tank. Now, even when we get it through here, we're still gonna have to run it through this other tube. The other one's a little bit bigger. Uh. Okay, phase one. We got it through phase one. Now we got another pipe we got to run it through and I've completely attached, detached my throttle linkage plate, whatever you want to call it, where all the things that go to the motor are. We got that off so I can clearly see the hose now, which is nice. And uh, I'm just gonna attach this string Had I not left this stuff detached, I would be um, in a sorrow right now. Because I, you know, just taking this plate off and seeing where I'm getting stuck, it's just the littlest of things I'm getting stuck on, but just a giant pain. Tie a little slip knot through there. Oh my gosh, that came out so easily with just the string. This is good. Baby steps. Baby steps, taking my time. We're gonna get, we're gonna get through it here, folks. All right, feed this through. There we go. Not getting stuck. Now we're going to run. I might just run on top of all this stuff here. Take my time and run this around anything that doesn't look friendly that could get caught up. We're doing it right. All right, now we can follow the sea clear into another rabbit hole, which is gonna be extremely tough. Okay, second to last leg of the race here. We gotta get this through this. Oh, gosh, can you guys see this? Can you guys see what's happening in here? That hole. That jammed up hole there. That's why I'm going with the wire and not the rope, because I'm gonna encounter some issues with this one. It's gonna get a little sticky. And we gotta get under the console. Uh, all right, we're gonna guide it in here. Guide it in. All right. Oh. 
Bom bem aí. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. All right, we got one more hole. One more stinky hole. All good. All good. Oh, well. A good Samaritan that works at the park just came by to inform me that I'm actually at the wrong park. So I was wondering, you know, why can't I get to my camp space and what's going on? He's a fellow dangler. He actually knows, he's familiar with the channel. And uh, he told me I was in the wrong place. So, but the nice thing is he said I could park here under the shade tree, even though I'm not supposed to park here. So, appreciate that, sir. Uh, Cause it is probably a hundred and something right now. Anyway, we got another drive ahead of us. He did say that the um, the park that we're going to is pretty remote and it's nice. So I'm gonna wrap this up and we'll head over there. We're almost done. All right, fishing freaks. Throw all the wires and the ropes and the the silicone and the, the sweat. We have two Garmin Echo Map Ultra 12s on the vessel. Now, to say this is a tight squeeze would be the understatement of the year. Um, look at that knuckle room there, boys. That is, I can move this back a squidge, but it ain't gonna be very much. Like I'm talking just enough for the fingertips to pass through. I'm not in love with that. Got to our campsite, made some adjustments, and now we have what much more clearance. I would say a full finger's width. That way I can get my hands behind the steering wheel. I'm not crazy about the, uh, you know, my, my steering wheel doesn't tilt. So that's kind of a problem with the screen being right there, but it'll do, it'll do. And I am happy with the front mount. So this is the moment of truth, guys. This is where we see if we're worth our our salt because I've been grinding on all this stuff and hopefully my wiring is going to hold up. If it's not, I'm just going to probably uh, pack it up and go home and <clears throat> think about my life. Let me just start from the back where it all is powered up from. And if, um, if you guys want to see how my boat is wired, uh, I've actually built a schematic out. This I went down a deep rabbit hole I wanted to do this right I built a schematic so I will uh, I will show you guys in this video pretty simple but this is how it goes so I got the I got the pro guide AG 31 AGMs two of them they are wired together in parallel we have our multi chemistry charger so we have that charging the dual bank here, and it's also charging our 24 volt lithium. That's also a pro guide. Then we wired in the Victron. So if you guys missed this video, I, I haven't seen anybody put one of these in a bass boat, but it's pretty cool. This monitors, this monitors the activity of the battery. What is going in, what is going out. And in order to do that, I mounted up a negative bus bar, ran all my negatives to that. That's going to the Victron, so that's showing, uh, that allows me to tell what is going out of this battery set, these two batteries. This Pro Guide has its own um, shunt in it to monitor everything. It Bluetooths to my phone, so I don't even need it. Okay, I have put in another Perco switch that is a Garmin, it says Garmin right there. So this is just for the graph and turret power. Uh, this is my master, that's on a breaker. Uh, Vexus has multiple um, bus bars, both at the console and conveniently up at the front. The old electronics were running on the bus bar, uh, Everyone has told me, um, Garmin, Pro Guide, Vexus, they, they have all told me 
running straight power to your graphs, dedicated power is the best way. So I got a harness. Uh, the harness is back here somewhere. Uh, it's kind of tucked in. You can actually see it. You can actually see the harness right here. Um, so this is the C clear. Yeah, these are kind of pricey. The harnesses are pricey. I think that one was, uh, was like 400 bucks. I could have made one myself, but it's just a time thing. It was hard, it was a bear to get through uh, these holes, these, these corrugated tubes. Uh, that C-Clear is not made, any harness is not made on this particular year model of my Vex is to go through there. So I had to route it around the gas tank. All right, so it's, it's going through the, uh, over the gas tank there. Runs up through around the uh, throttle linkage here. Um, comes up through there. And then the C-Clear splits off and then goes through another corrugated tube all the way up here. Now you might be asking yourself like, oh, you got LiveScope, where's the, where's the black box mounted? It's actually in here, guys. So Vexus makes a plate and they have room in here. I would take this off right now, but I am honestly tired of taking out screws. I will see if I have any B-roll to try to show you guys how that is in there. But I have uh, put a metal plate in there that Vexus, um, I got from Vexus. Black box is on top of that. Wires are ran. Uh, the turret here, this turret is run off of the uh, bus bar that the, the Vexus comes with. I also got a, uh, a Vexus over the foot pedal mount. This is really nice. It just mounts up right here. I just wanted a single graph, so that's it. I wired up the, everything tight. Um, I put protective coating on the wires, on my turret. I've got it run. Shout out to Foresight. I feel really bad because they sent me the uh, turret to put on my, as soon as, basically as soon as I got the new boat, they sent it to me and I've, I've been working on all the wiring. I haven't had a chance to open the box. I finally opened the box and there's a note inside and it was a really nice note. They liked, um, they liked the plug I gave them on my last silver bullet where I put one of these on here. I love it. I love running this system. So anyway, this is what they gave me. They gave me a custom foot pedal. So this is what Bluetooth to the Foresight turret and it's got LFG. It's in Guggen colors. Shout out to them. That is amazing. And what I love about this system is, you know, I love to, I love to multi-species fish. So I, I love crappie fishing. It's great for offshore uh, fishing for bass as well. But you can spot lock, you got this working for you and you don't have to be sitting there doing the want want with your foot. Now there are times where you don't want this thing up here. And what's nice about the foresight, the way it's mounted, it's one screw right here. I, I unscrew this, this comes out very easily. It, it uh, detaches right here. I've already got it set up to just detach and take off. Just take off the whole thing, just go away. Uh, and then I can put this on my trolling motor if I want to. So I have a separate mount right there, wah bam. And then I can do the, do all that. But I, I much rather have the turret and they actually have multiple speeds on the turret. So I can go fast with it, I can go slow. That's probably what I'm gonna use the most for crappie hunting, but I love that foresight system. It's great, love the turret. And that Amigos is my full electronic setup. That is how I've got everything wired. Let's see if things cut on. I'm actually a little nervous about this. Okay, let's cut on everything. Let's cut on master power. So in order to cut on this system, we gotta cut on master, and then we gotta cut on the Garmin's. Breaker's already on. Um, the reason that you want to do that is it's a it's an extra cutoff, so you're not pulling power. Uh, your graphs aren't pulling power. I, I can actually monitor that anyway through my Victron to see if I'm pulling power if the power's on uh, and the graphs aren't on. That's one really nice thing about the Victron. But it's, an, it's just an extra safety precaution, so we're, we're taking care of our batteries at all times. Let's we'll see if this power's on. 
Thank you, Lord. JC, what is up? Let's go to graph number two. Oh, this one's powered on, and guess what? They're networked. They're networked, so they're working together already. Hard work's paying off right now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Oh my gosh. And my buddy Zach, he gave me a, he gave me a little special little something, a little Garmin something on a card. You know what's what's pretty crazy is uh, I I fished in college, and there's there's a lot of people that I uh, I fished against in college. Some I even fished with that are working in the fishing industry still, and they're actually in pretty good positions and. Um, uh, good on them, man. I mean, I, th that that was an incredible time for me uh, when I fished college uh, college bass tournaments, and then just meeting other anglers and to still see them working in the industry like I am. Uh, it's a crew. It's a small crew, uh, but it's really cool. We're all getting older now, and you know, uh, kudos to uh, my buddy Zach uh, working at Garmin. So. United States. I'm going to do all this stuff. You don't have to see it. This should be the best, clearest picture possible. Running the harness straight, um, straight power here. Um, great cablings. I mean, I'm running six gauge, basically all the way up to the tip, baby. We did something good with our lives. I see the pan optics working. Pan, pan optics is on. We're on, baby. And I'm pretty sure the turret works. Let's turn it on. Turn on the foresight. Wa-bam. Oh, -ho, we did good work, ladies and gentlemen. Rock solid wiring and power. But I have learned a lot in this, uh, in this experience, wiring up my camper and this bass boat. Um, it's something that when you start it, you feel almost like you almost want to get up. You're like, oh, this is like crazy. I don't know if I could do this. Now I feel uh, very confident in like if my buddy has an issue, you know, my I need some help wiring this thing up. And I'm like, dog, I got you. I got you. I'm going to tidy things up and put the chairs back in, put the seats back in. They'll be ready to dangle, baby. This thing in here. Ah. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, she's heavy. Oh, still got it. Still got it, still pumping. Excuse me, but are we are we not gonna fire up the boat? I don't think so. Power on the units. God, I love to hear that sound. Beep. We're in business. Beep. Love it. So far, so good. But apparently I launched that into the lake that is just straight up stumps. So it's like a three foot, two foot flat for, it's like a mile. So stumps everywhere, gotta be a little cautious here. But hey, we got the silver bullet aluminum a dish. So yeah, I'm still gonna be worried. Still gonna be worried. Just made our first run with all the new, all the new. I'm gonna try to uh, find some brush or just find some fish. Alrighty guys, I've been waiting for this moment. Sun going down, hallelujah. Everything is put back in its place. I've got a couple of loose screws. Other than that, everything is solid. Everything is working great. The foresight is super smooth and quiet. All power looks good. Um, voltage up here, 12.9. 
Voltage back here, 12.9. Let's look at the Victron. Currently using 4.6 amps with both graphs, full blast, you know, for highest brightness basically. Uh, <clears throat> with the black box running, with the turret going in and out, we're gonna scan over and what do we see? Brush pile. Brush pile. We're gonna see if we can uh, pop a crappie. This is this is the deal with the turret. So I got spot lock on. Turret is pointing at the fish. It's gonna stay locked on. Just saw some bait fish move through there. Ooh. Oh yeah. This is this is a delight. Oh, I've missed this so much. So clear. Let's see if I just want that classic monkey milk dart. This is typically that time of year. They start really getting on that dart. But what I'm going to eventually do is get right on top of the pile. Oh, there he is. Got him that time. Oh, he's a little guy. Fell for the dart, though. I actually had to uh, bump the brush. Let's see. I'm going to go with the electric chicken bumping bug. Oh, he ate it. Oh my gosh, these loose lip sallies here. There's one good one in there, but I don't know. I'm, I'm also looking at a, a new screen, so <laughs> everything looks bigger to me. All right, that was lackluster, but I felt the bite of two fish. Coming at you live from the tailgate. You guys can already see from the sweat on my face how dark it is. Mosquitoes, my gosh. And we're gonna be cooking up some, some Bucky's bacon wrapped chicken cordon bleu. Old timer. You guys remember old timers? I got some old ones, literally from uh, my grandfather. Anyway, they got some new synthetic handle stainless steel Slices right there. Look at that bad boy. They've also got some really cool uh, fillet knives that we're going to be putting to use hopefully tomorrow. I'm uh, I'm just excited, guys. I'm excited that the day ended uh, with a fish catch or two, not a full catch, but got a few bites, and we just we could see under the water again. We could see what was going on. I, I'm trying to figure out a new system for truck camping in the summer. Um, Got an idea, got a video that's going to be coming at you here in the next couple weeks. Trying a new system for hot summer camping. Hopefully it'll help, help some of you out, help me out tremendously. But uh, tonight it's just hot and sticky. Hot and sticky bear in the brunt. Let's get a little juicy action here with the, uh, the old timer. Got to get through some bacon. Do all right, I think we did. Melty cheese. Mm. I don't have a meat probe with me, but that looks steamy and delicious, guys. Go ahead and cut some slices here. The bacon is burned around the edges a little bit, but it's cooked through. I'm glad I put the pot on top. Steam helped cook it. Made the blend of the uh, the cheese melting pretty perfect. It's um, 12 after 10. I'm gonna crawl in this hammock, attempt to get some sleep, and tomorrow we're gonna smash some crappies. From what little I saw tonight, this place is a, um, it's a crappie lake. 
I mean, first point I pulled up to, two brush files, crappie in it. I noticed some floaters as well. We got the new electronics, ripped the boat apart to get to this point right now, but we're here. I got a cooler full of ice on board. Our plan is to put some crappies in it tomorrow. So you guys stay tuned for the next episode. Wish me luck on surviving the night. Smash that like button to help the, uh, help the things. Stay away from me. And uh, thanks for tuning in today. I will see you guys soon.